What's going on YouTube? This is Ultimate Device Vids. In this video, I'm going to be giving you guys an update on the current jailbreak situation for iOS 7.1.2, 7.1.1, and 7.1, and the upcoming iOS 8.0 iOS version. And the first thing I want to talk about is the upcoming iOS 8.0 version. So for those of you who don't know, there's going to be a new version of iOS released in September. It's going to be iOS 8.0 iOS 8.0 will patch the current iOS 7.1.2, 7.1.1, and 7.1 untethered jailbreak. And patch just means stopping it from functioning. So if you update your device to iOS 8.0, you will not be able to jailbreak it. And if you haven't seen my iOS 7.1.2, 7.1.1, and 7.1 untethered jailbreak tutorial, I'll be sure to put a link to it down below in the description. So when iOS 8 comes out, do not update to it if you're jailbroken. You will not be able to jailbreak your device if you update it to iOS 8.0. If you want to know what the new features are going to be in iOS 8, be sure to check out the links down below in the description. It'll take you to a page on Apple's website in which they discuss iOS 8 and just tell you what the new features are going to be. Now, we're not sure exactly when iOS 8.0 is going to be released, but again, sometime in September. And iOS 8.0 is going to be released for the iPhone 4S, the iPhone 5, the iPhone 5C, the iPhone 5S, the iPod Touch 5th generation, the iPad Air, the iPad 4th generation, the iPad 3rd generation, the iPad 2, the iPad Mini, and the iPad Mini with Retina Display. So every iOS device that's currently supported by iOS 7, except for the iPhone 4, will be receiving the iOS 8.0 update in September. And when the iOS 8.0 does come out in September and you're jailbroken, you do want to avoid the update. And you don't have to worry about updating in settings, general software update. You don't have to worry about accidentally updating through there. Because on jailbroken devices, the over-the-air update feature has been disabled. So you can't update over the air. However, you can update through iTunes if you plug your device into your computer. So when you plug your device into your computer and open up iTunes, be very careful that you don't accidentally select update. Because again, iOS 8.0 will patch the current untethered jailbreak for iOS 7.1.2, 7.1.1, and 7.1, and actually any previous jailbreak as well. So if you're on another version that's currently jailbroken, do not update from that as well, of course. Some of you may be wondering if it's going to be possible to downgrade your device from iOS 8.0 back to iOS 7.1.2 as soon as iOS 8.0 is released. When Apple releases a new iOS version, the previous iOS version is only installable for, if you're lucky, a few hours, and if you're really lucky, a few days. When iOS 8.0 is released in September, there will be a very small window after iOS 8.0 is released that you're going to be able to go back to iOS 7.1.2. When an iOS version is installable, it's commonly referred to as it being signed, and that basically means that you're able to install it on your device. The latest iOS version is always signed, of course, because of course you could always install the latest version of iOS on your device. And as soon as iOS 8.0 is released and that small window is available when you can downgrade back to iOS 7.1.2, I'll be sure to let you guys know with the video how to do that. But again, it's a very small window, but of course it may help just a few people downgrade their devices. Now it is possible that some developer out there will release a piece of software that will allow you to downgrade your device from iOS 8.0 back to iOS 7.1.2. And this downgrade would work after Apple stops signing iOS 7.1.2. It is very unlikely, but it is possible. And if this tool is released, it will most likely require you to have something called your SHSH file saved for the version that you want to downgrade to. This has happened before. There have been methods released that allowed you to downgrade your device from one iOS version to another iOS version. But most of these methods required you to have your SHSH file saved for the version that you want to downgrade to. SHSH files are specific to your device, not just the type of device you have, your specific device. At the time that I'm recording this video, SHSH files for 7.1.2 are not useful. However, in the future, there might be a piece of software that's released that would allow you to download your device from iOS 8.0 back to 7.1.2 that would require you to have your SHSH files for 7.1.2 saved. Now, you can only save SHSH files for iOS versions that Apple is currently signing. For example, at the time that I'm recording this video, iOS 7.1.2 is currently being signed by Apple, so it is possible to save SHSH files for iOS 7.1.2. So once Apple releases iOS 8.0 and they stop signing iOS 7.1.2, you're no longer going to be able to save SHSH files for iOS 7.1.2. Now iOS 7.1.2 is jailbreakable, so if you have SHSH files for this version saved and a tool is released in the future that will allow you to download your device, from iOS 8.0 to another iOS version. Obviously, if you have your SHSH files for 7.1.2 saved, they might be useful, and of course, you could download your device and then jailbreak it. 
And because you could only save SHSH files for an iOS version that Apple is currently signing, now is a great time for you to save SHSH files for iOS 7.1.2. And again, when iOS 8.0 is released, iOS 7.1.2 is only going to be signed for, if you're lucky, a few hours, and if you're really lucky, a few days. And this so-called downgrade tool that I'm talking about will most likely not be released. Again, it's just good to be safe and have your SHSH files saved. And it gets even more complicated because you cannot save SHSH files for the iPhone 5S, the iPad Air, and the iPad Mini with Retina Display. However, you can save SHSH files on all the other devices, and just to be as clear as I can, I'm going to list them for you. It's the iPhone 5C, the iPhone 5, the iPhone 4S, the iPod Touch 5th generation, the iPad 4th generation, the iPad 3rd generation, the iPad 2, and the original iPad Mini. And even though the SHSH files for those devices will most likely never come in handy, it's good to be safe, and just in case a downgrade tool is released that requires iOS 7.1.2 SHSH files, Again, you're going to want to save them just in case. And of course, if you just keep your device on iOS 7.1.2 and don't update to iOS 8.0 when it is released, you will not have to worry about any of this. But again, just in case you accidentally update, it's good to have your SHSH files saved just in case a downgrade tool is released that requires them. Something else I want to mention is saving SHSH files has nothing to do with the version that your device is currently running on. For example, let's say I had an iPhone 5 running iOS 6.1, which is an old iOS version. If I saved SHSH files for that device right now, it's not going to get the iOS 6.1 SHSH files. It's only going to get the SHSH files for the versions that Apple are currently signing. And of course, 7.1.2 is included. So again, saving SHSH files has nothing to do with the version that your device is currently running on. It's just what Apple is currently signing at the time that you save SHSH files. And now I'm going to head over to my computer and show you guys how to save SHSH files. Now, of course, I can't show you how to do that on my iPhone 5S because you cannot save SHSH files on the iPhone 5S, the iPad Air, and the iPad Mini with Retina Display, as I mentioned earlier. So I am going to show you how to save SHSH files on my iPod Touch 5th generation. And in order to save your SHSH files, you will need to have one program on your computer. It's called iFaith, and I will provide the download link for iFaith down below in the description. Unfortunately, iFaith only works on Windows computers. So if you have a Mac, you need to find access to a Windows computer in order to do this. And the download link that I do provide will take you to this website. And once you're here, you just want to scroll down until you do see iFaith. And it doesn't matter what the version is, just select here and it will download iFaith. And once you have it, you want to right click on it and select run as administrator. And then select allow. And you will get this pop up. And then you're going to select OK. And once you're in this menu, you're going to select Show Available SHSH Caches on Server. And at this point, you're going to want to connect your device to your computer through the USB cable. And once it is connected, this program will detect it. And you will get this pop-up just like that. It's going to ask you if you'd like to use the newly connected device. You're going to select Yes. And once you're here, you're going to select Fetch the Latest SHSH Blobs Apple is Actively Signing. So select that and it is going to fetch all the SHSH files that Apple is currently signing. And once it's complete, you will get this pop-up. It's going to say iFaith has fetched the following SHSH blobs directly from Apple. Now you can see iOS 7.1.2 is included because again, at the time that I'm recording this video, iOS 7.1.2 is being signed by Apple. And again, if you're watching this at a later time after iOS 8.0 is released and after that small window when you're able to downgrade from iOS 8.0 back to 7.1.2 is closed, this method will not work. Again, this is only temporary. And again, these SHSH files will most likely not be useful in the future. It's just a precaution to take in case there is a utility in the future that's released that will allow you to downgrade your device from iOS 8.0 back to iOS 7.1.2 that requires you to have your SHSH file saved for 7.1.2. And I also wanted to reiterate that SHSH files are specific to your device and not just your device's model. So if someone else has the same device that you have, you cannot use their SHSH files even if they have them saved. SHSH files are specific to your individual device. And you will also notice that this program does fetch SHSH files for iOS 8.0 B1, B2, B3, B4, and B5. What these are are iOS 8.0 beta versions because there are some iOS 8.0 beta versions out right now to developers before the release. So of course the developers can test their applications out on the new iOS version before it's released. But all you're concerned with is iOS 7.1.2. And it does say beneath that they have been stored locally at then it gives you an address on your computer. So again you have the SHSH files saved on your computer now. 
So we're just going to select OK here, and then we could close out of iFaith. And at this point, you're done with your device, so you can disconnect it from your computer. iFaith did tell us where the SHSH files were saved. So they are saved in users, and then whatever the name of your system is, and then .shsh. Now to access this, we're going to need to open up Windows Explorer. For example, on some computers like this one here, you can see there is this yellow folder icon. And if I click on that, it will open up Windows Explorer, as you can see. Other computers like this one, you're going to have to select the Windows icon in the bottom left-hand side. Then you're going to select the name of your system up here. Then it's going to open up Windows Explorer. And once you're in here, you're going to select the .shsh folder. And here are all the SHSH files that iFaith saved. And you want to find iOS 7.1.2 amongst all of them. As you can see here, this one is 7.1.2 BGM. And just make sure that you always have this file saved because, again, it may come in handy in the future. And again, as of right now, there isn't anything you could do with this file. Just save it, and again, it may come in handy in the future. And if you want to, you can delete the iOS 8.0 beta SHSH files in here. Again, just make sure that you save the iOS 7.1.2 SHSH file. In the end, when iOS 8.0 is released, if you're jailbroken, do not update to it. But again, just in case you accidentally update your device, and there is a piece of software released in the future that allows you to download your device from iOS 8.0 back to 7.1.2, it's good to have your SHSH files for 7.1.2 saved, just in case the downgrade tool requires you to have them saved in order to do the downgrade. And once again, the method that I just showed you on how to save SHSH files only works on the iPhone 4S, the iPhone 5, the iPhone 5C, the iPod Touch 5th generation, the iPad 4th generation, the iPad 3rd generation, the iPad 2, and the original iPad mini. It will not work on the iPhone 5S, the iPad Air, or the iPad mini with Retina display. Unfortunately, you cannot save SHSH files for those devices. As soon as Apple stops signing iOS 7.1.2, making it impossible to save the SHSH files for iOS 7.1.2, I'll be sure to let you guys know in the title of the video, down below in the description, and in annotations on the screen. As soon as iOS 8.0 is released, if any pieces of software are released that allow you to downgrade your device from iOS 8.0 back to iOS 7.1.2, I'll be sure to let you guys know with a new video showing you how to do that. I'll also be sure to keep you guys updated on the iOS 8.0 jailbreak situation, so of course once iOS 8.0 is released and any jailbreak tools are available, I'll be sure to let you guys know with a new video showing you how to jailbreak your device on iOS 8.0. And that's all for this video, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.